What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? We are back. We are back. We are back. Girl, I thought this was going to be the new season of Love After Lockup. This new season of Love During Lockup. I mean, I'm not complaining because it looked like we just might get some stuff, okay? But they say new season, but it says season five, episode, what, 23? um the watcher and the dancer okay let's just get into it i'm so glad i ain't gonna lie to y'all i am so glad that the episode was only an hour it just felt like them hour and a half episodes were draining me okay they were draining me but we are back for a new season of love during lockup we're gonna have some fun with this we're not gonna complain we just gonna go with the flow right so we get into the um show and we have i believe four couples teeny and rob andre or A andrew and candace joey and michael girl i see yes we got a gay couple i'm so happy um and then we got ayana and jamal now let me tell you something i'm already judging a couple of these people i'm judging andrew and uh candace and i'm judging for real for real ayana and jamal and i'm only girl we'll get to it we'll get to it so we got teeny and rob all right <clears throat> what i can say about this season so far i don't know if we're gonna get yeah i'm pretty sure we're gonna get some more people but for right now these were the four that they gave us and for right now, at least the majority of them have already known each other prior to the people getting in, put, put in prison, okay? I think um, Andrew and Candace was the only ones that actually met on the freaking prison website. So, there's that. So, we get into Teeny and Rob. Teeny and Rob, they known each other since they were kids. Like, they went to school together, kind of lost touch. I think they went to, like... You know, they were like in a little relationship for a little bit, but then they kind of broke up. You know, that teenage stuff, whatever. Years passed by. Next thing you know, um, come to find out he's in prison, right? He's been in prison doing an 18-year bid since he was 18 years old, right? He's done 16 years, okay? And he's about to get out in a few weeks. So I'm pretty sure he's about to be on probation for at least a year or so. You know what I'm saying? For the rest of his time. And um, it was just so fascinating, the fact that he was in there talking all of this stuff. I mean, I get it that you seasoned, okay? You've been up in jail for over 15 years. I get it. But the way that he was like, you know, I ain't even supposed to have a phone up in there or whatever. But, you know, because I've been here so long, you know, the guards, they cool with it because I, they, they know that I'm a shot caller, okay? I'm a shot caller. So, like, if something else go down or whatever, they'll call me and I have the phone or whatever so I can call them and tell them to chill that stuff out, chill that stuff out. I'm sitting here like, what? It is so fascinating, y'all, to me to see how these phones they say that it's not supposed to happen like y'all not supposed to have phones and i'm so confused these days because do you understand how many inmates i be seeing on tiktok i mean they be going live and everything people got only fans and all of that stuff and i'm just so confused as to how was this keep on going on and they so bold with it and nobody has compensated nothing so i'm over here thinking that this stuff is okay I'm like, okay, the prisoners can have phones, but obviously they can't. Um, but Teeny and Rob been together, you know, for four years. They actually been married for four years. Girl, it wouldn't have been me. I don't care if I known you prior to you getting locked up. I'm not finna marry somebody that's doing a 20-year, almost a 20-year bid, okay? Baby, we not finna do this together. <laughs> we'll try this once you get out, okay? Teeny lived her life. Teeny didn't got, um... She got two kids. Oh, excuse me. She has a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old son, and I forget how old her daughter is. She probably like 13 or 14. Either way, 12, 13, 14, something around that age. Um, and so they going to go see him. He winds up telling her on the drive there, um, you know, that he got something to tell her. Like he was just basically saying how you know, he been honest with her. He has this secret, this only one thing that he has not told her this whole time. And I was like, what is it? 
they've been together and been married for four years. And the way that he made it sound is as if he's been holding on to this cigarette for a long, long, long years. Okay. And I'm sitting here like, is it a baby? Do you got a love child or something like that? And my, the calculations is like, if that's the case that you have another person prior to you messing around with her, come and give you con conjugal visits and you get that girl pregnant or did you get somebody pregnant before you went to jail when you was 18 years old? Like, what is it? Okay, because he didn't tell her on this visit, even though he called and said that he needed to. And she figured that it probably was because the kids was with him. Now, the kids and him have a good relationship too. Um, you know, He's like the only father figure that they have, okay? And for the most part, they like him. They love him and all that. They respect him. And they call him dad and all that. Y'all know how I feel about certain things. But we're not going to get into it just yet. I just feel some type of way about the fact that all them cameras is up in the house. Baby, you can't be in jail and you finna be clocking everything that I do inside my house that I'm paying for. Unless you put it in on the bill and you brought this house for me. Baby, we not finna have you on surveillance, okay? He got the camera all up in her bedroom. All up in her bedroom. She in there with her friend, Rochelle, and he was like, um, who that up there? She said, it's my friend, Rochelle. Well, you ain't tell me that Rochelle was coming. A bitch, who the fuck are you and what are you gonna do about it? This is my house. Do you pay the bills up in this mf -er? Okay, are you here to do anything? You are sitting on a cot. Sit there and know your place. I said, excuse me, excuse me, and then going to say something, well, <clears throat> you know, FaceTime me so I can see what you got on before you go out. Oh, what? What? <laughs> Mind you, I'm pretty sure he was saying all of this so that they, because they about to go to see him in the prison, right? I'm pretty sure this ain't her first time going up there to see him in the prison, okay? So, she know what the routine is. She know what she can and cannot wear and all of that stuff. I'm just sitting here like, you know what? He got cameras in her bedroom, cameras in the living room, cameras in the kitchen, you know, and there's no cameras in the kids' room and in the bathrooms, right? And I said it might as well be a camera up in your bed, uh, bathroom because... He all up in the bedroom. Baby, you can't even just roll over and be playing with yourself a little bit. And he just sit there like, why you got your hand between your legs? Because, nigga, what you think? <laughs> why are you here? Can I get some privacy? Girl, I mean, on the one hand, I guess it's cool. But on the other hand, I feel some type of way. Like, I, I, you in jail and I can't even. Big Brother is watching. Okay? Rob is watching. But um, I was just like, oh, oh okay, Robert. We gonna see how this go. I really do feel like the secret is that, you know, he probably do got a child. Now, it depends on if he has a child. If y'all believe that he probably got a child, how old do you think the kid is? Tell me in the, uh, 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 let's see if we're gonna be correct next week. Then moving on from that, we get this whole um, situation with Andrew and Candace. Oh. <sighs> Andrew is going to be the dumbest one on his cast so far. Baby, we weren't even 10 minutes into the episode and we realized how slow, I ain't going to say slow, how stupid this man is being over this woman. Andrew is 40 years old, okay? Candace is 29 years old. Now, we're going to have to blame the friend that came over James because from what I'm hearing and what I thought I heard, James was the one that said going on his website and he wound up going onto the website and linking up with Candace. And then this thing came to something that they, he, uh, girl, you set your friend up. James, you really set your friend up. And the way that he was sitting there and in the house, it's almost like he was judging. Like, you finna do all this for real, for real over this girl? You ain't never seen to in person. You ain't this. And I'm sitting here like, but you the one that told him to go onto the website and you should know how your friend is, okay? And I'm just like, oh, all right. Now, when we first see Andrew, Andrew in this small house, right? And I say small because I, I really don't like houses like this. If I'm gonna get a house, I'm gonna get a house where... Um, I'm not automatically right. The, the the dining room table is right at the door. Girl, please, I can't do that. I can't do that. Mm -mm. But he owned his house, so I can't complain about that. Um, about the only thing that he did right, I don't know. 
Girl, he said, Candace is about to get out in a couple of days. She about, you know, he getting all the stuff together. Now, at first, I thought he was just going to pack up and go meet her in Nevada, okay? And kick it with her for a couple of days because she got to be paroled out there. Oh, no. He getting a whole bunch of furniture and stuff. And I said, what the hell is this? What is all it is? I mean, are you finna pack up and you finna live with her for a minute? No. He about to furnish an apartment that he got her. You heard that correctly. He got her an apartment that he's going to be paying the rent for. $1,400. Which, I said $1,400 in this economy. In this economy, that is good, okay? That is good compared to what, so, well, we don't even know if it's a studio apartment or one-bedroom apartment. Now, if it's a studio apartment, ew, okay, that's still a lot. I remember back in the day, this, back, way back in the day, child, early 2000s and all that stuff, when studio apartments used to be like $600, $900. Girl, nowadays, you got studio apartments that's like $2,000, bitch, please. Okay, we're not doing that. But I was sitting here like, so you pay your stuff? Because at first, I thought he was paying rent on his house. No, he got a mortgage, right? I said, oh, okay, so you're going to be paying your mortgage. You're going to be paying her rent. And then he go outside. He go outside. And he said, I got a truck that I going to get her to. I said, excuse me, what? <laughs> Baby, let me just tell you this. <laughs> if I have not spent time with you in the real world, if I have not been able to physically lay in the bed with you, go on walks with you, talk to you face to face, cuddle with you on multiple occasions, baby, I'm not about to be spending all this money on you sight unseen. I'm pretty sure he didn't and seen her before, right? But I don't know your personality outside of you being in prison. You could be telling me any and everything that I want to hear because you're bored as hell and you need security when you get out because you ain't got nobody else there that's going to take care of you. And so let's get a fool and sucker him into doing all this stuff. And that's exactly what I feel is going on because, huh? She's paroled out there in Las Vegas. And so she got to wait till her uh, parole is over it before she can even move into the house. Because she got to go into the halfway house for a couple of weeks, for a few weeks or whatever. Then she got to um, do the parole uh, in the Las Vegas. So then she'll move into the apartment. And then once that's over with, she got to get permission from Las Vegas and New Jersey. I said, what the fuck? Just to move out there to where he's at. I don't even remember where he's from. And I said, that's just a little bit too much. Now, see, it's way too much. I would have been gave up. <laughs> and then I got to deal with the stuff that's going on in my own life. And deal with my own bills. And make sure this is this, this is this, and this is in order. And then I got to do this with you. Baby, that's too much pressure. That's too much stress. And I just cannot do it. I would have to eliminate the issue. Well, something got to go. And it ain't going to be me. It's going to be you, boo-boo. Okay? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I said, what? Are you serious? Then he goes down to a financial planner, right? And, or I should say a financial advisor. Baby, when they started going through the budget of what he went through, first of all, he has been married twice. Okay? He has been married twice. So that means that he's been divorced twice. He said his last wife that he was with, she was all about his money. Okay? And he's hoping that Candace is not the same way. I said, well, you're already starting it off and making it seem as such. You're making dumb moves right about now, okay? And when he was sitting up in that office, because the whole time I'm sitting here like, you paying for your stuff, you paying for her stuff. And I didn't even factor in the fact that if he got her an apartment, so of course he's going to have to pay the utilities. He's going to have to pay uh, on top of the rent, the utilities, if the utility is not included in the rent. Um, the, 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 her internet, her expenses, her food and all of that stuff. I was just like, oh my goodness. I didn't even factor all of that in. And I'm sitting here like, Andrew, what type of job you got? Cause what money you got? Cause you, you, you acting like you balling. <laughs> well, it feels like you living above your means and I need to understand. Baby, they broke that stuff down in the financial office. Girl. 
$1,400 for rent for her, right? He pays $1,300 a month in mortgage, okay? He brought the truck for her, and that's another $750 a month. I said, what? He also has child support for either one or two kids that he has, and he paid $450 a month. I said, excuse me, $450 a month? But you up here shutting out $1,400 a month for an apartment plus $750 for a freaking truck a month plus her expenses? Girl, girl, I was like, excuse me, and you can only get your kids $450 a month and you spending all of this on this lady that you ain't never kicked it with on the outside world? Baby, Andrew had me messed up. Andrew had me messed up. I said, what? And then he got to pay for his expenses. He got to pay for, you know, um, his utilities and his bills and all of that stuff. Plus hers and entertainment and all this. Woo, woo, woo. Girl, what it came out to be was like $6,200. Okay? $6,200. Mind you, we sitting here trying to figure out what the fuck he do for work. The lady said, well, how much you coming in? What, what, what you get? What you, what you bring in each month? Girl, so he works as the manager of a foreman of a, a warehouse or some shit. He, all I know is I'm probably getting, getting that wrong, but I do know he said every two weeks he get paid $3,400. I said $3,400 times two, you bringing in $6,800 a month. And then the expenses came out to what a total of what he paid uh, with all his stuff and her stuff. Six thousand two hundred some dollars. I said, I said, wow, wow, wow. You only got six hundred dollars to spare, <laughs> if that. And I'm just like, child, this is crazy. Do you not understand? He was like, I go broke for love. Says no one. Says a fool. Okay, where are your kids? <laughs> where are your kids? Mind you, after he comes from uh, uh, visiting the financial office, I just need to understand, why do these inmates, baby, you are an inmate and you are the one that you need to be on your P's and Q's and not make the person that's about to be putting you up when you get out pissed off because they could turn around and be like, F you, you can stay up in there, you can find your own way. Why are you getting mad? They be having the nerves and the audacity, the gall to get upset. He was on the phone with her and he was like, she said, babe, I can't wait to see you. You're, you you getting ready? Yeah, I'm, I went over there to the financial advisor. You went to the financial advisor? What you go to the financial advisor for? You ain't tell me nothing about that. Yeah, I did. I told you that I was going to. No, you never told me anything like that. And see, here's the thing. When we was talking in all of the year that we was talking and when she said the year, I said year as in one. You doing all of this over somebody that you was only talking to for a year? Which means you spent a little time trying to get to know this and then you decided that you're going to do all this within a year? Oh. We move a little bit too fast and I just don't understand why y'all moving like lesbians. What's going on? Is the world about to end? I, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. But she said... You never told me anything about that. And in the whole time that we've been talking for the past year, you never said anything about money. You brought up this whole stuff about what you was going to do. You was going to get the apartment. You was going to get this and you was going to get that. And you said that it was not going to be a problem. And I'm sitting over here thinking like, since you talking about some, you going to a financial advisor. Well, shit, is it going to be a problem if something happened and, 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 and you can't pay for it? Then what's going to happen to me? I said, you ungrateful little bitch. I mean, you had questions, but... I didn't understand why she was getting so upset. And the only reason why I said that was because she said, don't, don't, don't lie to me. Okay. Don't, don't, do not, not tell me anything. You know what I'm saying? And then she hung up the phone on him. <laughs> I, said, <"Bitch." laughs> I said, girl, the way I would have said, um, let me break about that lease. I'm not going to put my name on this no more. Break it out. Break it out. I, uh, whatever I, I will pay the, um, the love, you know, a, a, a termination fee, early termination fee, but uh, we about to turn all this back, okay? Because I'm, I'm not going to deal with this. That, girl, it only take one little thing for me to be like, nope, I'm done. 
<laughs> I'm done. I said, how dare you have an attitude like that and hang up the phone on that man just because he wanted to make sure his finances is intact so that he could take care of your raggedy ass. I said, oh my goodness, are you serious? What is happening here? Then we get to Michael and um Joey. Girl, Michael and Joey, girl. That's the gaze. We got the gaze, girl. We got the gaze. I'm so happy. Baby, um, Joey, he 46 years old. Michael is 40 years old. I think Michael was in the Navy. And ever since he got out, Michael just been on one, okay? He's openly gay. So it's no DL type of situation. It's no, you know, anything like that. He's openly gay. Like, they know he gay up in prison and all of that stuff, right? Um... From what we found out, you know, he just been in and out of jail. He had a mugshot rap sheet just like the rapper Kaya, okay? I mean, they said that he it looked like he got arrested every year. <laughs> he had a new mugshot. The way that they scrolled that thing down, I said, oh my God, you can see the age progression and everything. I was like, wow, Michael, please let this be the last time, okay? Plus, he got an addiction um, situation that's going on to drugs. Um, and that was part of the reason why he was in jail as well. And, you know, for them other times. But now, I guess he's clean. Allegedly, probably. We don't know. And Joey and him actually known each other prior to him going to jail this time. And they met on a dating app. You know, probably not necessarily a dating app. Probably a hookup app. That's what he said. And I, I'm pretty sure it probably was Jack or Grinder. You know. You know how the girls do. Okay. And, um, he was like, yeah, we hooked up a little bit. We did what we did. And we didn't really think nothing of it. But then, you know, some time go bad. And next thing I know, we talking. And then he in jail. And then I'm like, man, I got some feelings for him. And we hooking up. And that's my boo thing or whatever. You know, and we want to live together once we get out. He get out of jail and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Baby, they was flirting so hard. Michael was on that phone. He was like, what you got on? I said, oh, my God, really? He should have said, I got some pants on. That's what I got on. But um, they had that camera all up between Joey's leg. I said, I don't need to see his print like that. Mm -mm, put that moose knuckle down. Okay? Put that. Close your legs, Joey. Close your legs, marry me. All right? I was just like, oh. He said, uh, -uh you going to have to give me something to, uh, you know, let me make my day go about. Horny as hell. I said, ooh. Oh, I said, should I be listening to this? You know, this is the type of conversation I be listening to for real. I be like, <laughs> what y'all finna do? Let me watch. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. It is what it is. You know, fuck out of here. I ain't got nothing to lie about. But I said, you know, y'all doing all of this. Joey said, I can't do that because, you know, um, <laughs> my dad up in the other room. I said, so your daddy living with you? No, he living with the daddy and the mama. I said, oh, that's fair. What? Times was hard. You know, and my, my thing is this economy. So if you got a place to go lay your head, go ahead. I ain't judging. Oh, he said, you know, um, there was a time where he had went through depression and he was just going through it, through the motions. And his parents was like, you know what? You could come over. Why don't you just come stay with us? Okay. Um, he had said he moved out the house when he was 19 years old and this was the first time him coming back and you know He was going through depression and his parents said why don't you just come over to the house? Okay, and you can stay until you get yourself together put your things in storage and then you can save us some money and get your own place He said baby. I went on ahead and did that, but they told me that 10 years ago. I said so what the fuck is you doing? <laughs> but at the same time, it's like if the parents ain't telling him to leave I mean Hey, it is what it is. If the parents is not telling him to leave, so I'm not, I don't see the problem with it. But, um, because sometimes, especially when, you know, sometimes the parents get to an older age or whatever, they just want to have their kids around or, you know, sometimes they want their own privacy. But, you know, I guess his parents don't really care. And his story is, you know, like a typical... He came out later in life. He came out when he was 30 years old. You know, he said he used to date women, a lot of women and all of that but you know he was putting on the front he was hiding you know what i'm saying and so when he finally came out of course he went through a little slutty phase he said that's why he met michael you know that was doing his little slut phase i said do all of the gays go through that i don't know that many gay men who have not had a whole era 
<laughs> and I'm not judging because, hey, do you, boo boo. Um, but to my gaze, is it real? <laughs> Did you go through one? Let me know. Like, let's talk. Let's talk for real, for real. But, um, I, I, I wanted a whole face. I know somebody gonna judge and say, oh my God, you really wanted one of that? Why would you want? Cause I did, and I just never had one. Maybe I'll have one in the future. I don't know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm too introverted to do something like that. I mean, I get what I get when I get it, but it's like, to actually, I don't know, let me shut up. Moving on from that. Um. So he got that going on. And also, you know, I do like the fact that it seems as though his parents, well, at least the father, is accepting of him, you know, given that given that he came out later on in life and this is different, you know, they used to seeing him with women, but they probably had an inclination that, you know, he wasn't all the way uh, telling the truth about who he really was. Um, but the issue is the dad was saying how he just hoped that he not being conned, okay? Because, you know, they'll tell you anything and everything that they want you to hear while they in prison or whatever, and especially given that he used to be an addict and all of that stuff. And the dad also used to be an addict. He used to be an alcoholic, right? And, you know, Joey was saying how, you know, um, he know his daddy used to be an alcoholic. And so he was just thinking in his head when he was younger that he would never go through anything like that. He said, girl, he thought it was going to skip him, but it hit him right dead in the throat. Okay. In the esophagus, he said he had his first drink at 15 years old and was drinking ever since. Girl, he became an alcoholic. Then he stopped. Then he went through a period of depression. And when he came out, girl, that's when the meth came into play. I said, what? You went from one addiction to another addiction. And I said, baby, please don't let this be a love addiction, too, that you finna have with Michael. Oh, my goodness. Two XI addicts, you know, getting together. That's a dangerous combination, but I hope they see it through, okay? I hope nothing bad happened, and I hope that man, Michael, you better not play with him. You better not play with him, okay? You know, but Michael want them. He needs to send a picture um, to the uh, to the prison or whatever to prove that they known each other before he became a prisoner. I don't know what for. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that once he gets out, he's supposed to be living with, they want to get a place together. I don't know. Y'all can explain that in the comments to me. But they were talking about Photoshopping pictures together because they ain't got no pictures together. Because when they first linked up, it was just hookups. It, it wasn't no, I'm in a relationship, we friends and all this stuff. It was just a sexual thing, right? And so it was like, you know, let me get an old picture of you with whoever you with and let me Photoshop. Do you think that's going to work? I said, y'all up here trying to commit crimes. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to get the you trying to get his phone rights taken away from Michael like it's all good it's all good ain't nothing gonna happen I said um do not trust the uh the criminal okay that's the reason why he up in the prison baby the daddy said uh uh don't 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 do that don't do that okay please please don't do that um but I'm interested in seeing how they work because I don't know is this really the first gay relationship that we had have we had a lesbian relationship. We've had a trans, you know, Key Rock and um, Brit Britney, Key Rock and Britney. Okay, we had them last season, but have we ever had a lesbian relationship? And have and I'm pretty sure this is the first gay. Y'all can remind me and correct me in the comments if uh, if you remember if I got it right. But I was like, okay, so that's one I'm gonna be looking forward to for real, for real. Then we get to, um, what's her name? Ayana and Jamal. Ayana a scripper. And we just going to put it out there like that. Ayana a scripper. She got a couple of kids, right? She got to do what she got to do, okay? Now, see, at first, I was with Ayana. Because, listen, I'm not the one that's going to judge what your profession is. You got to make do. I don't judge strippers because you just never know the story. Sometimes people be up there, you know, trying to strip or whatever, get that quick, easy buck to pay for some schooling, pay for some bills, pay for some health care, pay for the kids and all of that stuff. Just pay for goddamn life, you know? And, and, and people be like, you know, I mean, that's cool or whatever, but how come you can't go get a regular job? 
girl who cares they working okay they working i'm not here to judge i can pay for some strippers i will contribute to your little stuff all right shake your ass in my face and let me give you a couple of dollars you know it's fine we getting an even exchange if you ask me and i'm just like oh okay so when i seen this in the preview i was like oh shit we got <laughs> y'all know how i do girl all of that went away when i found out her story <sighs> miss ayana you trifling as hell. Uh, you, you, you trifling as hell. Okay. And whatever happened to your ass happened to your ass. And whatever Jamal put your ass through, he put your ass through and you deserve it. Because why would you do what you did? Why would you do what you did? When you get together, have y'all not seen what's been happening lately when people get together with people that they ain't really supposed to be with? Or they get together with people on the slide and, 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 and be like, fuck sister cold, fuck girl cold, fuck man cold, all that shit. Like, girl, what? I would never in my life go with one of my friends or ex-friends partners that they had, one of their exes or whatever. I just would never do that. I will never do that. Like, it's so many bodies out here and you're going to fixate your eyes on my ex and my leftovers. I would just feel some type of way because that would make me feel like you had some things going on when we was together. Like, you was feeling some type of way when we was, we was together. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly how it was with Ayana and Jamal. Jamal used to fuck with her best friend. It used to be her ex-best friend, um, boyfriend, right? They used to live together. Ayana and the best friend used to live together. Jamal used to come all up and through that house fucking on the best friend and everything, being a couple and all that stuff. And they, they both secretly had shit going on with each other. You can't tell me no different type of stuff. Yeah, you know, they broke up and I am, you know, a couple of years or so passed and then we get to acquainted with each other and all that. And then we realized that we both had some feelings for each other a little bit more than we did. And all that. So we get together. And, you know, he got arrested. I'm pretty sure he was selling drugs or something. Because that's what they always do. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I ain't kidding. Um, and so, you know, she was waiting for her man to come home. I can't wait for my man to come home, you know. And I can't wait for that dick. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Close your legs to your friend's man. Ex-man, girl. Like, you are just trash to me right about now. Somebody gonna be like, well, I don't understand why y'all feel the way that you feel because the girl ain't her friend no more and that ain't her man no more. The girl ain't her friend no more because she found out that the girl was dating her ex-man. That's why they're not friends anymore. And they got into a fight over it and somebody filmed it. I said... Bitch, I'm looking at the fight that they put up on the camera on the TV, right? I was because she was like, you know, I did get in some trouble here and there, whatever. You know, I got into a fight with my ex best friend over Jamal because she found out I was fucking with him and all that shit. Beat that bitch ass. I said, wait a minute, hold on. I'm looking at the fight, right? I said, did I see this fight on Twitter? Because, girl, you know, they put all the fights on Twitter. <laughs> so I'm thinking, damn, this kind of look familiar. Huh. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But either way, you still trifling as hell. And I hope the friend whooped your ass, okay? But, you know, she tried to make it seem like she whooped the friend, ex-friend's ass. But, ex-friend, what's your name is? We can ride at dawn if you want to get get froggy and, and, and you want to do something to the girl, okay? Well, no, we ain't finna do that. We don't promote violence over here, okay? But I get it. I get it. I get it. Ayana, you trifling as hell. And see, that's why what's happening to you is happening to you, okay? Because... I don't understand how you feel like you finna get out of jail. He finna get out of jail. He gonna be kicking it with you. And you got records and shit too. This bitch then got her license suspended because she was driving under the influence of marijuana. I said, all right. You know, that may not seem like a big deal because I have been in a car with somebody who was driving under the influence of marijuana. And let me tell you this, never the fuck again. Never the fuck again. I was young. I was real young. That was when I literally became, when I turned 21 and my, um, and we was going to the clubs. No, this was actually before I turned 21. Girl, and I told y'all about that time when we was up in the car and, um, uh, my, um, cousin, boyfriend at the time, they was, they was hot boxing. We was hot boxing in the car. That was like the first time I smoked weed for real, for real. The first time I smoked weed. Bitch, they was throwing, it was like three to four blunts that was going around in rotation. Wow. 
imagine how I felt when I got out that car. And I was just so glad at that moment that, you know, we were parked. But prior to that, he was smoking while we was driving the car. I said, oh, wow, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm green. I'm green. I didn't say nothing, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck am I going to do? And peer pressure, bitch. I'm telling y'all all of my stuff. And I only got quiet like that because I feel like somebody judging instead of saying, girl, we understand because we've been there too. But bitch, the only reason why I brought that up like that is because, you know, she was up in there doing her thing. Mama only made $600. She said, you know what? I make $600 a night. I said, that's it. That's it, Ayana. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I guess that's enough. I mean, you got two kids or whatever. That's a night. $600 a night. Let's say you go and script. Let's say you take a week off when your cycle is on. So you, and let's say you do five days a week, five times 600. That's $3,000 a week. Okay. Times, let's say three. That's $9,000 a month. Mm. That ain't a lot. I mean, I guess, but. Maybe because I know strippers that make way more than that night. But I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I kind of am. I kind of am because she did make it sound like she She said, I make $600 a night. And it's good. Like, I'm financially good and all that stuff. I said, oh, where they live? I said, where you stay at? Because maybe that's what it is. Because where you stay at, it probably don't, you know, it don't matter. Because out here, that ain't shit. And I don't know if in the city, that shit ain't shit, bitch. Girl, you still pop. <laughs> You're still scrambling. All right. But no, so you said all that, right? And then she get a phone call from her lawyer that basically said, you know, so you just got uh, arrested for something and this is about the DUI. And she was like, yeah, I was driving under, I was driving high. You know, that's what it was under the influence of marijuana. And it was like, okay, well, at this point, there's nothing we can do for you. There's nothing else I can do for you um, because, girl, you already got a, one other offense on your card. And so, therefore, now what's going to happen is you're going to have to go to jail. Either you're going to have to go to jail for 15 days or you're going to have to go to jail for 90 days. And she was like, um, what can I do to go for the 15? Because I got kids, man. I can't be doing this. I got kids. The whole time I'm sitting here like, well, maybe if you was you thinking about them kids when you was out here getting high on while you was driving. Like, y'all be killing me when y'all bring up, I got kids. I can't do this. You weren't thinking about them kids when you was out here committing a crime. Okay, and you want me to feel sorry for you? No, I feel sorry for the kids, okay? That's who I feel sorry for. You You really want to mention them kids, but you was up here. I can't wait for my man Jamal to come back and so I can do this and I can do that. What about your kids, okay? Now you finna go to jail for a few days and you up here and your feelings about it. And then talk about some. They finna put me in jail for, for just for driving high off of marijuana. Just for being high on marijuana. I said the way she said that shit was like... Oh, they finna lock me up just because I had a cigarette in my car. I said, bitch, obviously you were under the influence of something that probably was illegal in that state at the time. We ain't legal everywhere. It's legal out here, but it ain't legal everywhere. And then you still got to be careful with it, bitch. I said, girl, like every time I try to do something, everything just keep on getting messed up. And they just rip it right from under me. And I'm just tired of this. I just want to see my man. And I got this. And I'm just so tired. You want me to feel sorry for you, Ayanna? I don't. I don't, you, I, I'm telling y'all, like, I'm a judgmental person to an extent. I feel like we all are. And as soon as I found out that she was fucking her ex-best friend, man, oh, it was over and done with. It was over and done with. See, girl, I was so ready to be on your side. I was so ready to be on your side. But then I found out how you got that man, and I just said, girl, fuck it. <laughs> but anyway, that's the episode, y'all. It was cute. It was cute. Hopefully... We get some more. I felt like this was a little bit more real. Because y'all know when we first started doing Love After Locker, what was that bitch name that kept on going with all uh, the crazy one that kept going with all of the men up in uh that was dating multiple inmates at one time? It was giving me that that shit was fake as hell. Okay? And I, I swear to God, I feel like she probably is related to somebody that we've seen on TV. I feel like she's an actress. Okay? I really do. It gave fake. But... 
just from this one first episode, it's giving like these people being a little bit more real, real, it's giving a little bit more authentic. And maybe that's what's going to get me to be sucked back in. Because I'm telling you, the last season and Love After Lockup, I was like, this is cute or whatever, but I'm getting the love. Can we, can we move it on? Can we move on? Because I'm tired of this. You know what I'm saying? But right now, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. You guys tell me how y'all feel about it. I will promise to try to get these episodes out if they're only going to be an hour. I'm try to get it out on that night. Y'all going to have to bear with me because I don't know how this internet going to be acting. But hey, just know that it was recorded right after the show. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you guys later. Peace.